So this is one I've gotten a lot of requests for, especially since I did the airplane tutorial, is how to make a 3D spaceship that flies around in kind of an arcadey Star Wars kind of style. So not realistic physics, but more of uh, the dogfighting action kind of game. All right, so let's take a look. For our spaceship models, we're gonna use this ultimate spaceship pack that was recently released by Quaternius. It's, they're really cool. They've got a lot of different ship models to choose from. And conveniently, they come in all sorts of formats. The GLTF version is what we're gonna use. So that's what I'm gonna drop in my assets folder of my project right here. And then I've chosen to use the executioner model. So this is the ship I'm gonna use. Okay, but in order to use this, I'm going to take the executioner and I'm going to import it and use kinematic body as the root type so that when I create a new uh, instance of one of these, it'll already have a kinematic body as its root. So new inherited scene and you see I've got a kinematic body and then the mesh is a child of it. And now we can add a collision shape to this and you can do the collision shape however you want. I'm not really concerned about collisions for this demo. We're really talking about the control. So I'm just gonna do a simple box shape around the, um, around the ship body and uh, not worry about the details because, oh, and I just noticed, by the way, something to keep an eye out for when you're importing meshes, notice that this mesh is facing the positives, the axis, which means that when we fly around, we're going to be flying backwards. So you need to take the mesh and rotate it 180 degrees around Y so that it will be pointing in the right direction that we want. Okay. And all right. So there's my collision shape. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. So in the input map, I've added inputs for pitch up and down roll right and left, yaw right and left, and throttle up and down. And for all of these, I've added the inputs, both keys and game controller. You'll definitely find that using analog stick input for the controls is going to work better. And then throttle up and down, I've just done buttons for. Okay, and so we'll use those in the script that we're now going to add to our executioner scene. Okay, here's our script. We're gonna start with a couple of variables that we can set for the performance of the ship. The max speed is gonna be our top speed that we can go, and acceleration is just gonna be how fast we can get there. Um, obviously, in a real space situation with no, no friction, there isn't a max speed, but again, we're, this is an arcade style, you know, Star Wars type of flying around ship, and there's gonna be a max speed, or else uh, things would be really hard to control. And then we're going to keep track of our velocity and we're going to keep track of our forward speed. Our forward speed is basically how fast we're going to be going. That's going to change when we uh, throttle up and throttle down. And then velocity is going to be our vector that we, uh, that we have out of that. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're just going to talk about forward motion first. Then we'll get to the, then we'll get to the controls. Um, so we're going to use get input here. So we're going to make a function called get input that's going to check the status of all of our inputs. And for here, we're going to do throttle up and throttle down. And all those are going to do is lerp our forward speed, right? When we throttle up, we head towards the max speed. And when we throttle down, we head towards zero. Right? And that's all we really need to do with those. And then we can do our movement. And in our, in our uh, physics process is where we will do the movement. Okay, so we get the input. We set our velocity equal to our forward speed in the forward direction. And then we'll uh, just, I'm just going to use move and collide for move, movement here. Obviously you can use move and collide or you can move and use move and slide. And I'm not actually capturing the collision info, which we would eventually want to do uh, in case you ran into things. But again, I'm mainly just concerned with getting the movement working. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. All right, to test this out, I've made a test scene here with a nice space background and a camera so that we can see if our ship is moving and make sure we don't have any problems. So I'm going to hit play the scene. And now I can hit my throttle up and throttle down buttons and I should see the ship accelerate and decelerate. 
All right, so now we know that stuff is working. Now we're ready to go back in our script and add some functionality for the rotations. So we're going to set three uh, configuration variables for the speed at which it will roll, pitch, and yaw. And then we're going to have a variable for each of, the, each of those axis inputs that we'll be capturing from the joystick or the keyboard. And then in the get input is where we're going to capture these. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make each input equal to the input's action strength. Right, so up, mi up minus down, roll left minus roll right, yaw left minus yaw right. And now we'll, that will get us each of those inputs, and then we can use those inputs in the physics process. And we'll do that by rotating the basis. And we'll rotate the basis along each of those axes based on what the input was. Roll is along the Z, rotating around the Z axis. Pitch rotates around the X axis. And yaw rotates around the Y axis. And then it's always a good idea when you're manipulating the basis to orthonormalize it because of floating point errors will eventually accumulate and make your your um, axes no longer orthogonal and things will start to skew and, and look weird. And now we should be able to try this out and see if it works. So I'm going to yaw, I'm going to roll, and I'm going to pitch. Okay, And now you can see we can control all those together and rotate the ship in whatever direction we want. And if we and actually, if we throttle up, we should see the ship fly away. Let's point away from the camera. And then if I pitch up, I'm going to do a loop. Right, yaw will go in a circle and so on. And we can also roll. And, OK, so that is our the basics of our control. Right now, let's talk about improving this a little bit. If you notice when I was rolling and you know, pitching the ship and so on, it moves a little too sharp, right? The ship starts and stops instantly based on the input. And that doesn't feel very natural. So we want to give it a little bit of, we want to do a little bit of lerp there to cause it to not stop instantly. And depending on how rapidly you do that, you can set how floaty you want those controls to be. So we're going to add a variable here called input response. And the bigger this number, the faster the response, the quicker it'll snap to, to moving and, and, and not moving. And then we'll use that here when we get the inputs. Okay, so instead of these three, what I'm going to do is actually um, make these lerps. So we're going to when we have a new pitch input, which is the same combination of inputs, we're going to lerp it based on that input response. Okay, and what that's going to do when we try playing this is watch when I roll, when I let go of the stick, the ship still rolls just a little bit, right? It comes to a stop pretty quickly, but there is a little bit of time there. And you can adjust that based on what you set that input response to. But now we get a little bit of, gives us a little bit of a feel of inertia, right? And you can you can't instantly change direction. There's a little bit of delay when you slam the stick from the right all the way to the left. One other thing you might have noticed is that the controls are a little bit awkward. Because we have three axes of rotation, we need to use two analog sticks. So I'm using the left stick and the right stick, right? And the left stick does roll and pitch, and the right stick is doing yaw. And that gets kind of tricky to control because you're using both, both sticks at the same time. And so what a lot of space games do to get rid of that problem and make it so that you only need one stick for steering is to link two of the axes. And that's what we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do here. We're gonna link the roll and the yaw. And to do that, we really just wanna go up here and we wanna make the yaw speed somewhere between a quarter and a half of what the roll speed is. So I'm going to make it let's just 0.75. Okay. And then down here, instead of getting the yaw input from the joystick, right, instead of that, we're just going to say yaw input equals roll input. 
And so now we'll be able to steer with one stick. Now, uh, what this will look like is essentially when you when you roll, you yaw a little bit too, right? Pitch is still up and down, but now yaw will roll a little bit. And it makes your ship spiral a little bit. So you sort of turn to the right a bit when you roll to the right. And that's really all we need to do. And you can experiment with that quite a bit. And if you have, if your ship has different types of, if your game has different types of ships in it, you can set them up differently so that different ships have different handling capabilities and fly differently. And you could also try doing things like linking pitch and yaw, for example, instead of roll and yaw. But I, I recommend you, you experiment with it and play around. So to see how this might look in practice, let's take a look at a little example of a game I've made where I added some effects and shooting and some other ships, and we can switch to a chase camera, right? And you can fly around. And like I said, this is where you'll want to experiment with different types of ships and different behavior depending on what you're going for. All right. I hope this tutorial was fun for you and helps you with the space game that you dream of making. Thanks for watching and make sure to check below for a link to this example project that you can try out yourself. You can find this recipe and lots more on the Godot Recipes website at godotrecipes.com. Here you can find a wide variety of recipes for creating the game system you need, some help on how to get started with Godot in the basics section, and lots more. I recommend you go over there and explore and let me know if there's something you're looking for that you'd like me to add, as I'm always adding more recipes over time. Right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.